Thank you guys so much for tuning in and talking to Walk today. I have Joe Smith here, also known as I am Joe Smith on all the handles, which you'll get later. But right. here to bless the stage, but also to share your story. So how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm cracking <laughs> up because you got this fake accent slash hood accent on at the same time. It's tipping in there, whether you know it or not. Oh, I'm not trying to do it <laughs> purposely. So. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You don't got no tea, so okay. it's not going to work for you. But how, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, though. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited sure. for you to be here. I'm happy um, to be here. Again, uh, just excited for what God is doing in, in millennials. Um, again, long week lost someone that was 23 this week and just to be able to see you living for the lord and really going hard is just a blessing so nice. i appreciate you thank being you here. thank you thank you but a lot of times you know people get up there they sing and they do their thing and a lot of people don't get to hear the story there's always a story behind what we do so true. definitely want to bring it out today so first question simple question is just share a little bit about your upbringing as far as um well the lord. um definitely was raised in a church mm -hmm. kind of been in church my whole life um i have four other brothers okay which um we kind of like competed with who can uh, please mom and dad the best. So like, you know, who can be up on time for church or mm -hmm. who can do the most in, in church. So um, that was a big part of my, you know, childhood, like mm -hmm. being young, wasn't allowed to listen to secular, secular oh, okay. music and that kind of stuff. So just, just coming up, that's, that's all I knew. Sunday mm -hmm. was church, Wednesday Bible study. So that's kind of so all I really knew. grew up in church. Yeah. Like okay. that's, that's, that's how many of you, is it just five boys? Yeah. Just my mom and dad still together and they got, just five boys, no girls. So that's we're actually a rap right. group. That's where we kind of, that's where my music kind of started. But, okay. But okay. the union is my five brothers. So you grew up in the church, but then you, you know, everybody, you know, they kind of come to Christ through their parents or somebody mm -hmm. to tell you who Christ is. But then something happens where it changes for yourself. So when was that like moment where it became like, I'm now a follower for myself and you begin to build a relationship with them? Um, I feel like my relationship, um, I feel like I always had a relationship with God, okay. you know what I mean? Just to say, um, as far as my maturity, mm -hmm. as far as growing up just in life. That's good. So yeah. as I became older, became an adult, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Going through high school, that's always in my ear to what can I do mm -hmm. to uh, be a better person or, you know, please the Lord. So mm -hmm. I feel like when I really started living is when I became an adult. Mm -hmm. You know, when you truly understand, understand and you yeah. have the option to decide to mm -hmm. live for them. So you were in a group, um, but then you also um, are solo. So how do you kind of balance it? And how has that been for you guys to like work it out? Because sometimes you can get, you know, people kind of feel some type of way or they may, may or may not. So how do you balance that and then still balance your um, solo um, career? Well, it's, it's definitely hard to balance it um, because you, you're definitely con conflicted or mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, you know, you, you, your time is divided now. But um, how I balance it is whoever I'm around the most because mm -hmm. it's, it's four of us. So we're all not in the, in the same space at the same time. Okay. So if I'm with one brother, I'm focused on him. We can focus on group stuff. And then I may do solo stuff when I am by myself. So I guess the balancing part is just, I mean, just time all management right. pretty, pretty much. You know okay. what I mean? Like when I... And what advice would you give to somebody? Um, for me, it's like when you step out and it's just you and the Holy Spirit up there. Like, I started this with five females, five other girls. Well, four mm -hmm. other girls, I'm sorry. And then when I got up here by myself, it was a whole different ball game. Right. And it's like, okay, it's just me and you, Jesus. Like, right. you know, like, if I bust right. up, what you going to do? So <laughs> right, right. how has that kind of helped your relationship with the Lord? Because you really are up there. It's just you and him, and he's helping you to do that. Well, you, it, it helps you. Well, it forces you to, to be you know, truly committed, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because if you got a group, you got someone else, you may mm -hmm. be having an off day, off week mm -hmm. or whatever, you got somebody to fill in for you or somebody to just, mm -hmm. just speak on your behalf, exactly. even though you might not be in the right heart and mind. So I guess being a solo artist, you got to make sure you're ready because you're the only one that can mm -hmm. speak for you and you are representing the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So you're not just representing yourself and you also representing your group that you, yeah. that you say you're supposed to be a part of or that mm -hmm. you represent. So you know, just doing a solo thing, it kind of put me in a position where make the decision, make the commitment, mm -hmm. and be committed. You know what I mean? So. And where did you guys get the name of the union from? Like, where did that actually um, come Actually, from? Uh, uh, um, an old head at our church, we call him B. Nate. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, man, y'all y'all got to be united. He always would tell us, y'all should be united. Because us as brothers, we competed at everything. Mm -hmm. So we was always, you know, like, get, bumping heads all the time. Mm -hmm. So he, his advice to us was be united, be united. So our group was the, the union. So he just gave okay. us that. That was the first name he gave us, and it kind of just stuck. And, you know, we mm -hmm. just ran with it. I like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So a question before we um, go to um, your first song, which is Concrete, correct? Concrete. Okay. So first thing is, um, 
I, you actually shared this, and a lot of people don't say it, but you said that, you know, in there and walking with the Lord, you kind of struggle with women. Now, I thought that Ooh, that was actually, that? you said it, turn around and turn back, look in the mirror. But I thought that was dope that you were actually able to say it because a lot of people try to make it seem like they have it all together. Right, right. Everything is peaches and cream and ain't nothing happening because I know Jesus and it's not. So how do you handle that? And what advice would you be to somebody because... At the end of the day, we all have things that we struggle with. That might not be their, that might be their right. issue, but what, what advice would you give? Because you, you're 29 years old, True. you're young. Am I? Yes. Oh, <laughs> and you, yeah. you want to live for the Lord. And you know, you know, you know, again, like you said, you want to live this out. We are the first Bible that people see. So right. what, what, what did you say for that? So, um, well, that is, I feel like that's a, a typical male struggle. You know what I mean? Uh, but my, my advice would to be, don't lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be attracted to the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You and then as a young man growing up, that those feelings they they're natural feelings. Mm -hmm. So don't try to oh I cannot I will never look I will never you know what I mean? Because that just confuses you and then it, it it creates the the barrier of I can't show what is a natural feeling, mm -hmm. what is a natural emotion or just a natural reaction to a woman. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's that's my that would be my first thing. Like I'm not going to sit there and act like I didn't notice how pretty she was mm -hmm. or how you know nice she looked but most most christian guys they'll try to do that and be end up doing things behind the scenes mm -hmm. which hinders your walk with mm -hmm. christ so my step would be you know be, honest, be honest with yourself yeah. and then go to the lord with it lord i i'm attracted to this woman so but and then the more honest i became the more times that you know situations would if i am with a females they would kind of like you know not go at the you way to the Lord. right because i'm taking to the yeah, Lord. so he yeah. like the bible mm -hmm. says he will provide a way of escape mm -hmm. so i'm not going to say that i'm i'm perfect but at the same time me just being honest and giving it over to the lord when those thoughts and feelings do come mm -hmm. it kind of helps you out with your with i your think work. that's cool um something about when he says lay your burdens down but something about lay it means to like to leave it and sometimes right. we you know we want to pick those things back up and things right, like right, that right. And, or and if or if we do pick it back up we feel guilty and a lot of people live under this condemnation that we're no longer under because we're under right. grace. Like, I understand when you say taking it to the Lord because for me, I've been celibate for almost six years and people mm -hmm. always look at me like, what, you what? But right. if you would have known me six years ago, I wouldn't think I was said this six years ago. Right. But I had to really lay that down and I had to deal with why I was doing it as well. Ex right, exactly. right, right. So that. I had to be honest with myself that I had an issue instead of making it seem like everybody exactly. else's issue. Right. So right. I understand that. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to take a break. We're going to jump okay. into your first song and then we'll be right back. Sounds good. All right. I say I'm born again. What does that mean to a human like me? Who is with a sense of team? Never dipped off the scene. Could you say I'm concrete? Yo, yo. Could you say I'm concrete? I say I'm born again. What does that mean to a human like me? Who is with a sense of team? Never dipped off the scene. Could you say I'm concrete? Yo, yo. Could you say I'm concrete? But little did he know, simple show when his heart so cold. He folded up his arms, hoping to control things he didn't know that ran the show. He never let nobody know. So I don't think you get close. Little did he know, simple show when his heart so cold. He folded up his arms, hoping to control things he didn't know that ran the show. He never let nobody know. So I don't think you get close. Close. From a distance, I'm on fire like an arson. That's awesome. What they can't say really not important. I'm nervous to get exposed. Got me shaking like it's Parkinson's. Give me some space. I need you to respect my margin. Caution on what I do outside of the market. Cause some can sense that bull in my eye becoming a target. So forget the rap. It got me running like a faucet. From my gift, I start to sink to the tallest dag that's so lawless outside with the prowlers there's no game i'm so plain like twin towers i start to fall think it's better maybe if i was somebody else who was getting commas or somebody else who's probably dealing with comments like he came from all that man i see him climbing i don't say nothing dog i just stick with the silence because you can tell it's hot if it's always up in the climate yeah what does that mean to a human like me who's with his sense of team never dipped off the scene could you say i'm concrete yo yo could you say i'm concrete i say i'm born again but what does that mean to a human like me who's with his sense of team never dipped off the scene could you say i'm concrete yo yo could you say i'm concrete like 
11 years or so, I've been so called spiritual. Talk about I love him, but had traits like I go dig it though. Wasn't really in with him, I thought, man, I ain't really know. Usually when you waste outside, homie, dig your hole. You kill yourself, that's harsh, that's what I'm really told. But carry the cross, ain't jury, man, it's a death open. He live cause we die, die so we can live. And doing we the kids, but I don't think you want to give. We only shining light like a candle slit. See, it's small, but it looks good when the dirt is hit. Christ wants us to be flame on the end of tip plus He makes the bar rock like it's politics Use it with some substance that's the precedent So when I started rap about my flaw, what type of gift is this? Questioning everything, my mind is deep Wondering if I was really made on the concrete again What does that mean to a human like me? With a sense of team, never dipped off the scene Could you say I'm concrete, yo, yo Could you say I'm concrete? I say I'm born again what does that mean to a human like me? Who's with a sense of team? Never dipped off the scene. Could you say I'm concrete? Yo, yo, could you say I'm concrete? Little did he know, Sim was show when his heart so cold. He folded up his arms, hope it took control. Things he didn't know, they ran the show. He never let nobody know. No, I don't think he get close. Little did he know, Sim was show when his heart so cold. That he folded up his arms, hope it took control. Things he didn't know, they ran the show. I never let nobody know, so I don't think you getting close, close, yeah, getting close, thank God for forgiveness, man, always, I am Joe Smith, I am and I am. And thank you guys so much for keeping it locked there. We just saw a performance here from I Am Joe Smith um, from Concrete, which was dope. Um, I think what I love the best about uh, your song is that it can appeal to both sides. It can appeal right. to somebody who loves Jesus, like, look, I, Lord, you want to give me something or I'm going back out in the world. Right. Or to somebody who's in the world and can see that there's a different side of Christianity. I think um, I heard one of my friends say this when I interviewed him on radio where he said we got to stop um, – Lying to people in a sense per se, like if you're not if you're not good as your credit, you might not be called to that, and that's good. But you can definitely tell that this is a call, and the flow is there. I think that it's dope that um, you're being. You can tell you're being yourself. You can tell right. you're in your element, and you're not forcing it. And some people they kind of seem like they're forcing it. So right. I'm not coming against nobody. I'm just saying we coming? all have our calling. <laughs> I ain't up there tap dancing. I mean, it ain't my calling. You Sometimes, might be good at nope, tap. Nope, I'm not okay. going to. So I ain't going to do it. So. <laughs> One thing I actually wanted to ask you about as well is that it is 2018 and, you know, we we say we give this Lord, you know, I'll give myself to you per se. This is what we all do on Sundays. But then when things happen, we kind of see people run away from God instead of walking away from the church and things of that nature. What right. advice would you be able to give to somebody growing up in the church? I'm sure you've seen a lot, yeah. um, but you're still walking this out with the Lord. You haven't turned from him. You just continue to press forward. So what advice would you give to somebody that may kind of be over the church thing or right. don't really know like, okay, this is, I know that I love the Lord, but I, I feel like I'm called to this. So what advice right. would you give to someone to balance that? Um, well, my, well, my advice to whoever um, would be, um, I guess I would say you can't do it for people. Mm -hmm. Like people, when people decide I don't like the church, there's, a specific church building, mm -hmm. a specific pastor, a specific person that comes in mind when you say the church. Mm -hmm. Like people not thinking about the body of Christ, they're thinking about specifics. Uh, a building. So, right. So, mm -hmm. and with that being said, when people uh, have issues with what the church did or what, mm -hmm. what Christianity is, they're, they're talking about or referring to a group of people. Mm -hmm. So in order to live a life that is a personal relationship with God, there can be another relationship that you're adding into your mm. personal relationship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it confuses you. Mm -hmm. So, and then you, you lose focus on which direction you're really supposed to follow. Some people follow church principles, rituals, uh, tradition, and then you, f you find out that rituals and traditions change. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you, if you continue to focus on that, those type of things, then you're going to confuse yourself. That's religion, per right. se. Right, I got you. <clears throat> exactly, the religion piece. So, every, you know, you hear this thing, it's, it's a relationship, it's not religion. You know what I mean? So, in, and to continue your walk, you have to establish your relationship. So, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you may say about the gospel, because I know what the gospel right. is to me. So that's how you, that's, good. that's how I be able to. That's good. So I wanted to actually kind of back up because I wanted to jump back into um, your parents. You talked about like when you were younger, you kind of went through some things with your parents and it's kind of a typical household, but you shared that at one time, you know, your mom was angry and then you said your father might've struggled a little bit with, did you say drinking? 
For my father? Uh -huh. uh, no, no. Okay. My, my dad wasn't a drinker. Okay, no. so what? What? So your parents has always been together. Yeah, they always time. been together. I, I would say the issue that they did um, encounter was, um, I guess, trying to um, represent put on a certain persona mm -hmm. for us. Okay. So they, when they argue, they try to keep it between them. Okay. So now we may be looking to see, like, you know, because growing up, mom and dad are perfect. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just, you know, as a kid, you don't know any better. So when you did see my dad, who's going to make mistakes, my mom going to make mistakes, it's like, oh, my God, like, how can you make the mistake? So mm -hmm. I think that was kind of a struggle for them as far as, well, I don't know their particular struggle, mm -hmm. but for me watching them, mm -hmm. I would have to say um, they, it wasn't nothing physical that they were actually doing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they, like, they really don't smoke or drink or nothing like mm -hmm. that. They're kind of like just really lazy. Sorry. <laughs> but, but, but like th their thing was to try to, you know, not cover anything up, but, I, but just I, to I represent. I what you mean. Because yeah. that was kind of like, my dad's thing was he wasn't around to, to not, so I wouldn't see certain things. Like, they, they're being parents at the end of the day. And I think what right. I'm, I'm hearing you say, that's why I wanted to back up, was a lot of times parents kind of cover things, and right. then your kids kind of put this expectation on you, as, or so per se, and they kind of live the world through that expectation. Right. And then you find out later that might not be what it was. That was kind of it for me. Oh, okay. And then I would kind of struggle with relationships like, well, I didn't see this, or I didn't see that, or right. well, why didn't you tell me the truth side of it? Because right, then I right. had to live it out. And so that's exactly, what I, exactly. I heard you say when you shared this. So I think that that was, that's dope. But I also think that it's dope that you talked about how your parents are together because um, when you said it was typical, unfortunately, what they talk about typically now is a single parent household. Yeah, I know and these kids are being raised by the TV and things of the nature. And so, how are you able to kind of like relate to millions or share what they're getting both sides? You had a mother and a father. I don't think you may you may think it's a blessing, but on the other side of just having a mom is totally a blessing. Right. In 2018, so how was that to be able to have a mom and a dad and to both see them living for the Lord at the I, same I time? Think, I, I think it was good. It helped mm -hmm. me a lot. It helped me. It gave me that that foundation to always go back to mm -hmm. outside of, you know, your, my Christianity foundation. But it, it gave me that, that you know, that, that's something that I can rely on yeah, and trustworthy. Because they, they've been together. They, they had their ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did, you know, you know they, everybody, nobody's perfect. Yeah. You know, they, they did sin. So, but it was more so, like, because they tried to, you know, I guess live their lives mm -hmm. for their children, it kind of gave exactly. me the, the example to follow. That's my dad actually wrote a book. That's the uh, about their, their marriage, 30 years and counting, um, William F. Smith, for the plug, plug. For the plug. <laughs> 30 years and counting, but yeah. there, and, 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 and he, he was able to, what he didn't show us growing up, he talks about it in the book. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of him opening up about just because we were together this long, it's not all that's flowers right. and days. But that's what I, that's what I, when you were sharing this story, I think that's dope because, right. um, it's not, even though you do have both mom and dad, it's it, not always perfect. It's not always perfect, Even if you perfect, just got right, mom right. or you just have dad, it's not always perfect. But one thing I've learned in walking this out with the Lord is that transparency is the best thing and it saves lives. And marriages, I'm sure like your dad and your mom sharing it because it's not perfect. And a lot of people today, um, marriage is kind of like a, a maybe now, kind of right. back in the day, that, like that's what you do. But that is Christ institute. That's the, the, how we see, you know, the relationship with Christ and ourselves, the right. body. And that's what he instituted. But now people are not looking at it the same. So to so be able to get both sides. That's, that's right, dope. right, right. I think I think it was really, really beneficial. Um, it kind of it was, you know, it's good and bad with it. Mm -hmm. Most people are like, oh, you had both parents. You, you had a perfect, perfect little life or whatever. Mm -hmm. But no, because a lot of times they will try to agree before they come to us. So okay. once they agree and it's disagreement with you, you have no other outlet. Mm -hmm. You can't go nowhere else. It's you're wrong. So a lot of times I'm always wrong. I'm always in trouble. I'm always, because they always were together. Mm -hmm. So it was good for them, but for us, it's like, dang, we, we mm -hmm. can't win in here. So we got, so, I got to get out. <laughs> so last thing before we go to your next song, can you share a little bit about your journey with you? How did you actually, did you always do this for Christ or how did you actually get into like um, doing music? Well, I'm, I'm a, I, was a, I was a hip hop fan, you know, mm -hmm. growing up in the, uh, in the 90s. You know what I mean? Like Nas, Jay Z. That's, but we wasn't allowed to listen to it. Yeah. So we would sneak listen to it. Okay. And then my brothers would try to tell, you know, take each other CDs because we wanted to be there. So I always had a, a passion to, to, to try to just to listen to music, mm -hmm. the sound, you know, the, the emotions, expressions. So because we wasn't allowed to, I had to use my gift for something that my that parents approved. Yeah, you know okay. I mean, so I had to do it like that. So and then it just grew when I became more, you know, of a, I guess, more. Uh, knowledgeable of mm -hmm. what I'm doing, mm -hmm. it just kind of grew to 
you know, being up. And we're going to take a break and we're going to jump into your next one. Can you share the story behind the, your next song that you're going to perform as well? The um, story behind the name? Oh, uh, well, the song is called Gang. It's on iTunes. Google, I'm Joe Smith, you get it? But um, it's called it's called Gang. And um, it's kind of it's kind of to try to because like you see me, you're going to you, you get your typical stereotype, mm -hmm. young black man. You know what I mean? What is he about to rapper? Uh -huh. What is he about to uh -huh. say? Or he's going to say what the typical, um, I guess, generation is we'll talking say, about. Right. Drugs, money, women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but my thing, I didn't want to run from the stereotype mm -hmm. because you can look a certain way. You can have the tattoos or the, you know, the demeanor or even, you know, the personality of like trying to be, mm -hmm. you know, cool. It's not, it's not, it's not a problem to try to be, you know, cool or have a swag, mm -hmm. but you can still have that and it can be translate it to a positive message. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So, like, I can rep where I'm from. I'm from East Oak Lane. It's not a hood. So, like, when people, from the dip, from a looking from a distance, you may say, oh, he's up, what's his gang? He's up to no good. But it's to really, like, like a double play on words, right. like, for the, for, the, for, the cr for the guy on the street, you don't have to be that way. Yeah. And from the, the, the church who may not accept me as mm -hmm. I am, come to see what I'm actually talking exactly. about, and then you'll, you'll get where oh. I'm, I'm going from. Okay. Well, gang... Mm -hmm. We're about to jump into the next oh, song, and we'll be right back <laughs> Where you from? I'm from East Oak Lane. They like, what that mean? <laughs> Everybody want to be a gangster now. I ain't no gangster. I just represent Christ, and I ain't scared. So let me rep my game. God, always, forever. All right. Fact that I'm here is a big blessing. Yeah. Winning so much, got a good All lesson. Right. Christ coming back in a world caption. I feel like Southwest when the king setting. Wait, hey. I'm in King Session. Graduated fair, I'm just doing what the king, king said. Keep checking myself, I replay it. Replay him, cause I gotta run it back like I'm through defense. Okay, see a red shooting like a Durant. He's so glam, that's my cam. I'ma throw it up, I don't care where I'm at, cause I know that Christ is what I represent. You can watch me back and take your time and get this in, young man. How you feel about that? Say you love God, where your heart at? Say one thing, do it different. What you call that, see? I spotted you when you just walked through the door, man, you faking it. Something you bought on 52nd Street from the all of them stores? Wait, hold up. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you do. Sometimes, man, I talk a lot, but, but I'm going to give you more lines than a park a lot because cool. everybody want to talk about that gang. You ain't really rapping nothing. No. Everybody got so, so much to say, but you ain't really say saying nothing. nothing. Everybody want to do what everybody else do. Switch it up or something. Everybody got one life to live while living up at night. Everybody want to talk about that gang. You ain't really rapping nothing. nothing. Everybody got so much to say, but you ain't really saying nothing. Yo, everybody want to do what everybody else do. Switch, Switch it up or something, bro. Everybody got one life to live while living up and up, and I'm wise. Been around for a minute like 06, but they still sleeping on me like I'm hypnosis. But you know, you know me. I'm sick with the rap like I'm always just dressing in togas. I'm focused. Yep. I'm sick with the rap like a head with a scarf on it. it. I'm cool, bro. I just want to talk to him. I land away, game, bring a hawk to him. You ain't even good at your job. Pie fire, put the spark to him. Like y'all say, y'all not, not doing what said it short. You repping that gang, bro, you need to Please stop. stop. I'll run through your hood, make friends with your whole block. You act mad when you really not. Cause we all in the same box in the same slot for the same, same slot. Uh, I ain't saying lane better than yours. No. Just trying to get you on board. Yeah. Lane, just run for the Lord. Bless the, the running, running supports. supports. It's like why we living it for. Gang, reflect what it's taught. Do the word and on the cross. Death cannot face, face us no more. more. He guarantees us what you want. Pay attention, I'm the boss. You, you know it like everybody want to talk about that gang. You ain't really rapping nothing. nothing. Everybody got so much to say. You, you ain't really saying nothing. nothing. Everybody want to do what everybody else do. Switch it up with some cuss. Everybody got one life to live. Why well, live it up for nothing? Everybody want to talk about that gang. You ain't really rapping nothing. nothing. No. Everybody got so much to say. Say, you ain't really, really saying nothing. Yeah. Everybody want to do what everybody else do. Switch, switch it up, son. Everybody got one, one life to live. live while living up and up. Y'all yeah. yeah. feel me? I am Joe Smith. And thank you guys so much for keeping it locked here the entire time for talking about we have been here the entire time with Joe Smith. I am Joe Smith again on yep. all the handles. We've Google seen it. two dope performances, two, two totally different types of um, flows, and I'm definitely a fan. Um, 
Before we get into the last part, I wanted to ask you this. Um, always give somebody a scripture or something the Lord give me. And this is what he gave me for you. It's Titus 1.8. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. Has that been a struggle for you? Or how are you kind of seeing the Holy Spirit help you to play that out in your life? Because when I hear you talk, I hear, I hear you know, being hospitable because right. you work with your church. You love God. You kill evil with God. You're self-controlled. You're working on it upright and holy and disciplined. So how right. have you kind of played that out in your, in your life? Um, well, I'm, I'm not perfect. I struggle every mm -hmm. day. So I'm not going to sit and act like I'm, I don't. I don't care how many cameras you got. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, um, but, like, I try to, I try to each each moment you have the ability to choose mm -hmm. what you do with that choice is exclusively up to you. Mm -hmm. So with, with that being said, I try to use each moment to glorify God. Amen. Even though this particular moment, I may not glorify God, there's always a next moment right. where you can choose. So as far as like being, either being hospitable or giving uh, things back over to mm -hmm. someone else, um, mm -hmm. if that hasn't happened in this moment, mm -hmm. the next moment, the next encounter, I have the opportunity to do it so mm -hmm. i don't hang my head when i do make my mistakes when i do sin when i do when she walks by and i'm like <laughs> y'all see that <laughs> but no like oh no, that, i mean it happens so i try oh to God. the next moment are you going to look again if she comes back this way no because i'm able to prepare myself for the next thing so mm -hmm. um that i never heard that scripture Titus 1-8. Titus 1-8. I'm going to yeah. write that down. I'm going to get that camera to Holy write that Holy Spirit down. gave it to you. I'll give you the note. Yeah, I need, I need that. I need that. But, that, but that's good, But that's though. what I, when I, when I, when you shared your story with me and when I thought, this is what the Holy Spirit gave me, you mm -hmm. know, God knows you better than anybody here. That's and true. that's what he gave me. And as you're talking, that's exactly what you can tell that you live to do. You're not perfect. You're living to right. glorify God in every aspect that you can do. And I think that being transparent is the greatest thing that you, you right. can do. And that's what you are. And that's perfect. You kill evil with good. Well, how do you tell that? You struggle, you t tell your struggles, but you tell how you overcome it exactly. through Christ. Exactly. So that's perfect. So where can anybody, actually, I want to know, what, what do you feel is next for you in this season? Because I kind of feel like you, Jack, you, do, you produce as well. You're not just an artist. You produce, right, you I do produce, a lot. So what do you feel is next in this season? Um, what's next for me is, um, I'm, I guess I'm going to try to do, uh, put out an album mm -hmm. um, or maybe a mixtape or something. I have albums out now, um, but I think I'm going to do the next album, the next phase. I guess the group of songs that I'm doing. They're not currently out. Well, the gang song is out on iTunes. So, you know what I mean? I'm going to try to do that okay. next on album. And where can they find you on social media? Um, I am Joe Smith, all one word. You can put that's that in. That's simple, too. And he pop up, too. I pop up. If it, you could go to Google and pop it in. That's and cool. It come right up. Everything you need. Music video, all of that. So if you want to book him, you can go there. Also, you know, you can follow me at Zarina Lomax 33, which is on Instagram, Zarina Lomax on Facebook. I'm here every Saturday at 930 a.m. And Wednesday is radio as well. You can check me out there. You can follow me on Facebook and keep up with the time. Um, but the most important thing of all this is, despite of all this today, the reason why we're here is because we know Christ. You heard his story. Everybody has a struggle, but at the end of the day, I love when the Bible tells us that friends are sins and forgiven. I love how Jesus calls his friend. And he loves you here today to hear his story, to hear a little bit of mine, to show you that nobody's perfect, right. but he loves you just the way that you are. He has a plan and a purpose for you. It might be for you to rap. It might be for you to be up here. It might be for you to sing. Right. It might just be simply for you to, you know, just to uh, be an intercessor. It, he has so many things he's called us to do. Right. But at the most important thing is for you to get your relationship right, which That's is true. what we talked about. So right. if you don't know God, if you're struggling, if you feel like maybe you've messed up, you heard him say, you live for the next moment to glorify God. And right. repentance is real. The only way that that happens is through the blood of Jesus. So if you haven't accepted him as your Lord and Savior, or if you are struggling with your faith, you can simply say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I invite you into my heart. I do believe that you are the, um, Jesus the Christ and you rose with all power here on the third day. Um, I ask you to forgive me for my sins that come into my heart and I give you my life. And I ask that you teach me what, what, your, um, what it is that you desire for me to do. And it's really just that. It's not a sentence. You know, they say, say the sentence right, prayer. Right. It's an it's a exception into your heart. And we look right. forward to having you in the kingdom. So I thank you so much for being here. Do you thank actually you mind praying this out? Oh, yeah, sure. I don't mind. I don't come mind. on here then. All right. All, all right. right. So, um, Dear God, I just want to thank you just for the opportunity that we have to just discuss your word and discuss, you know, our Jesus. lives and just to um, try to better commit to you and to glorify you in every aspect of our lives right now. We just want to thank you and praise you. We give it all back over to you. It's not about me. It's not about the show. It's not about anything like that, but that you get the glory out of my life right now, Lord. I just thank you right now for the opportunity that I do have to share the gospel, to share my story, to share my testimony, and I pray that it be you know, the word will fall on good ground, not my words, but your words. And I thank you right now just for 
just everything you're about to do and what's to come. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, and thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back next week.